Hey everyone, I'm AIM Showtime, aka Zero Shift on Gilgamesh. In this video, I'll show you how to play Paladin in the new expansion, Dawn Trail. Compared to Endwalker, Paladin retains its core gameplay with minor changes. Paladin utilizes its sword and shield and boasts strong defensive tools and powerful burst damage using its spells and ranged attacks. Without wasting any more time, let's get started. Iron Will is Paladin's tank stance. Turning on Iron Will significantly boosts the enmity generation from all attacks. You must always have this on in dungeons and if you are main tanking the boss in trials or raids. Paladin's standard combo is as follows. For single target, we start with Fast Blade, to Riot Blade, and into Royal Authority. Royal Authority grants you Atonement Ready, which allows you to use the weapon skill, Atonement. For AoE targeting, we start with Total Eclipse into Prominence. Both combo finishers in Royal Authority and Prominence grant you a Divine Might buff. Divine Might allows you to use your next Holy Spirit or Holy Circle with no cast time and increased potency. For three or more targets, use Holy Circle over Holy Spirit. Be sure to use this Divine Might buff before hitting your next Royal Authority GCD or Prominence GCD as you cannot have more than one Divine Might buff, making it wasted damage. The new change in Dawn Trail removes the old Sword of Stacks from previous expansions. Atonement is now used after receiving the Atonement Ready buff from your Royal Authority combo. So, instead of three Atonements, the last two GCDs are now called Supplication and Sepulchre, and each weapon skill becomes available after using the previous skill respectively. These two GCDs are slightly more powerful than Atonement. During the rotation section of this guide, we'll refer to these skills as Sword of Skills and discuss how to pull these stronger GCDs optimally in your burst window. Imperator is the upgraded ability to Requiescat at level 96. Imperator is a stronger version of Requiescat. It is AoE damage instead of single target, it can be used from range, and the effects you gain are also the same as the ones you get from Requiescat. Upon use, you still gain your 4 stacks of Rec. Each stack dramatically increases the damage from your spells, your blade combo, and it makes all of your casts instant casts. However, these stacks should only be used for your blade combo. Imperator also grants you Confidior Ready, which lets you use Confidior and begin your blade combo. Imperator should only be used under your fight or flight burst window. Your blade combo is as follows. Confidior, Blade of Faith, Blade of Truth, and Blade of Valor. After using Blade of Valor, you unlock the powerful OGCD, Blade of Honor. All our ranged attacks and AoE damage. Confidior, Faith, Truth, and Valor each consume one stack of Requiescat. Each spell gives you a 400 potency heal as well. Blade combo should only be used while under fight or flight. Goring Blade is a 700 potency GCD that can only be executed after using Fight or Flight. After using Fight or Flight, it gives you the buff Goring Blade Ready. This was a new change introduced in Dawn Trail. OGCDs Expatian and Circle of Scorn are AoE abilities. Expatian is a 450 potency hit to the primary target and reduced damage to the rest. Circle of Scorn places a dot on all enemies it hits. Be sure to use both of these abilities on cooldown. Intervene is your gap closer and you have two charges of it. Try to save both charges under your burst unless you are trying to gain uptime. And by gaining uptime, I mean holding an intervene if you know there will be some sort of disengage or knockback that will make you lose a GCD if you can't immediately gap close. Fight or Flight is your damage buff that increases all of your damage by 25% for 20 seconds. Goring Blade and Blade Combo are mandatory under this buff, as they are your hardest hitting actions. Three filler GCDs will complete the buff window, but we will go over that in more detail in the rotation section of this guide. One use of Expatian, Circle of Scorn, and both intervenes should also be used under Fight or Flight. Now on to the opener and rotation. The opener for Paladin has changed slightly due to the change to Goring Blade and the additions of Supplication and Sepulchre. However, it still remains pretty simple and relatively easy to perform. The opener is the same whether you are a main tank or off tank, just have your stance on if you are main tanking. First, we'll start by casting a Holy Spirit about 2 seconds prequel. Slide cast up to the boss and begin your standard combo. Potion here after Riot Blade. And double weave Fight or Flight and Imperator right after Royal Authority. Then, start your blade combo. Be weaving your OGCDs, Circle of Scorn, Expatian, and Intervenes. Then finish up your blade combo with Blade of Honor. We move Goring Blade after blade combo since it is forever bound to Fight or Flight instead of having its own cooldown, making it impossible to drift. This means using it early no longer has its benefits. Blade combo will take priority to ensure it hits all the party buffs. Your last three GCDs in Fight or Flight will be your Atonement, Supplication, and Sepulchre. 
Divine Might Holy Spirit is now pushed outside of fight or flight because of that first atonement. The numbers here show that it is a minor gain to do it this way. So instead, Divine Might Holy Spirit will be the last CCD in the opener. Paladin carries over the same concept as explained in my Endwalker guide for the rotation. You still have your filler phase and your burst phase. The filler phase is just what you do in between burst phases. To perform your filler phase, you simply perform your Royal Authority combo until your fight or flight comes back. When performing your Royal Authority combo, instead of immediately spending your solar skills and Divine Might Holy Spirit, you will immediately spend the first atonement and then begin another Royal Authority combo. Then, just before hitting your next Royal Authority GCD, use the following procs in this order. Supplication, Divine Might Holy Spirit, and Sepulchre. This enables you to automatically pull your stronger GCDs or your burst window without recognizing when to hold specific skills so it is good to develop this habit. Be sure to also use Expatian and Circle of Scorn on cooldown. You will get one use of each outside of your burst phase, and drifting them will eventually mean you lose uses of them in your burst phase. Save both of your intervenes for fight or flight unless you need to gain uptime. The burst phase is your fight or flight window. You must use fight or flight on cooldown no matter where you are in your rotation. Once activated, it will signify the beginning of your burst phase. Fight or flight should be the first weave, followed by Imperator, since the damage from Imperator gets buffed by fight or flight. So keep those two in line with each other just like in the opener. If you cannot keep the two together because of fight timing, skill speed, or ping, ensure that Imperator is used after fight or flight. Once activated, your burst will be identical to the opener, with blade combo and goring blade taking up the first 5 GCDs. You also must be using your OGCDs as they come up. The last three GCDs, however, are filler. Those three filler GCDs should be prioritized with trying to fit Sepulchre since it is stronger than Divine Might Holy Spirit. For example, suppose your burst phase begins right after you use Royal Authority. In that case, your filler GCDs would be your Sword of Skills, Atonement, Supplication, and Sepulchre, and your Divine Might Holy Spirit will be pushed outside of Fight or Flight. If you performed your filler phase correctly, your last three GCDs in Fight or Flight will never be Fast Blade or Riot Blade. Paladin's defensive utility stands out from that of the other tanks because of its strong self-mitigation, targeted mitigation, party mitigation, and unique skills that save runs like no other tank can do. We'll start with your basic cooldowns. Rampart is your standard tank roll cooldown that mitigates damage by 20% for 20 seconds. At level 94, Rampart also increases healing by 15%. Bulwark blocks all incoming damage for 10 seconds. For some reason, Blocks only mitigate 16% of damage in Dawn Trail instead of 20% like it was in Ken Walker. We'll see if this later gets changed because this seems unintentional. Also, keep in mind that blocks do not mitigate damage from dots. At level 92, Sentinel gets an upgrade to Guardian. Guardian mitigates damage by 40% for 15 seconds. Guardian also grants you a shield equal to a 1000 potency heal. Hollow Ground is your invulnerability that completely negates damage for 10 seconds. The only downsides are its long cooldown of 7 minutes and its very small delay when first activating Hollow Ground. Because of this delay, it would be wise to use it slightly earlier than needed to survive damage or to stop GCD entirely to correctly time Hollow Ground for tank busters that last for more than a few seconds. Reprisal is an AoE debuff that places a debuff on enemies within its radius. The debuff reduces the damage dealt to the party by 10% for 15 seconds. Reprisal can be overridden by the other tank, so coordinate with your co-tank where you want to put your reprisals. Reprisals are helpful for mitigating raid-wide damage from the boss because of its long 15 second duration and short cooldown of 1 minute. Reprisal is also extremely useful in dungeons because of its ability to be applied to multiple targets within its radius. If there are no upcoming AoEs, you can also use reprisal for tank busters, especially if they are shared busters while the other tank can cover the next AoE with their own reprisal. Divine Veil places a raid-wide shield onto you and the party for 10% of your max HP, which is a lot, so don't underestimate that. Any skill that increases your max HP will buff the shield Divine Veil provides. Divine Veil also heals everyone in its range for a 400 potency heal. The shield lasts for 30 seconds, making this cooldown really easy to use preemptively. Clemency is a unique spell that allows Paladin to cast a 1000 potency heal onto you or a party member. When used on a party member, you are healed for 50% of what you healed the target. Clemency costs 2000 MP and does not break your combo. Clemency is rarely used, but is a strong tool for rate progression or knee situations to prevent wipes. Passage of Arms is a channeled ability that lasts 18 seconds and forms wings behind your character. Any party member in those wings gain a 15% damage reduction and 
guarantees a 100% block rate for yourself. Channeled ability means you cannot move or perform actions while in use. Any movement will immediately end Passage of Arms. Because of this, Passage of Arms becomes a very useful tool during downtime or transition phases. However, Passage of Arms has a lingering effect on the party for about 5 seconds, so you can still flash it on the party as a weave and return to hitting the boss. The Oath Gauge is Paladin's resource for several defensive actions. Your Oath Gauge increases passively by 5 for each auto attack you land on the boss, so be sure to be in melee range if you are trying to build more gauge. All your cooldowns that utilize Oath Gauge require 50 Oath Gauge to use. Holy Sheltron mitigates damage to yourself by 15% plus an additional 15% for the first 4 seconds. It also places a regen on you for 12 seconds, equaling a 1200 potency heal. Intervention mitigates damage to a party member by 10% plus an additional 10% for the first 4 seconds. Intervention also gives the target a 12 second regen, just like Holy Sheltron. If you have either Rampart or Guardian active on yourself before giving intervention to a party member, the base damage reduction is increased to 20%. Because of this, Intervention is incredibly strong for double tank busters, an amazing cooldown to give the main tank when they are taking a solo buster, heavy auto attacks, or just giving a dying party member a chance to survive lethal damage. Cover tethers you to a party member for 12 seconds. For the tether to remain active, that party member must be within 10 yams of you. Cover redirects most damage, debuffs, and knockbacks from the covered target onto you instead. Cover uses your own mitigation to calculate the damage instead of the target. Hollow Ground, however, is ignored when calculating damage for the covered party member. It will only calculate the damage for yourself. So, if a party member who is not a tank is somehow targeted for a tank buster and you cover them, but you only have Hollow Ground, you will most likely die to that damage because you are taking it raw. Another example is when you are covering a target and you both will be hit by the same source of damage, such as an AoE or a double tank buster. In that case, Hollow Ground will nullify your own damage, but the covered target will still receive raw damage, unless you have a shield or your own mitigation. In situations like that, using your personal mitigation on top of Hollow Ground would save that run. Other than that, if you are trying to prevent a death by using cover, use cooldowns other than your invulnerability to do so. For single boss fights, Pairing cooldowns for tank busters allows you to safely mitigate almost any buster without over mitigating or under mitigating. For example, if you use too many cooldowns for a single buster, you may have no cooldowns left to mitigate the next buster. If you don't use enough cooldowns, you'll simply just die to the buster. Pairing these cooldowns and cycling between them is an extremely helpful way to mitigate, especially if you do not have the fight mapped out. For the first set, I like to use Guardian with Holy Sheltron. For the second set, I like to use Rampart, Bulwark, and Holy Sheltron. For dungeon mobs, however, cycling cooldowns is the way to go. Mobs in between the bosses hit much harder if you are mass pulling. During the boss battles in dungeons, I typically only use Holy Sheltron for the busters and then save the rest of my cooldowns for the mobs. On the first big mob pack, after you grab all the enemies, use your hollow ground. It is free and you want to gain more uses of hollow ground throughout the dungeon. Please note though, if you have a white mage, please wait for the holy spam to become resisted before using hollow ground or any big cooldowns for that matter, because you're literally just wasting your cooldowns if the mobs can't hit you because they're being stunned by holy. So just wait for them to become resistant to the stun, and then you can use your big cooldowns. Make sure you are cycling between Rampart, Bulwark, and Guardian, and make sure you are pairing each of them with the Holy Sheltron. Always start with the shorter cooldown because they will come back faster for the next mob. For example, I will start with Rampart and Holy Sheltron. Rampart is also long enough to have two Holy Sheltrons used in there. Once the Rampart timer is almost done, I use the next cooldown, Bulwark. Use your Holy Sheltrons once you get enough gauge again. And at this point, the mod pack should almost be gone. So I would just use Reprisal and Arm's Length towards the end so that I could just save Guardian for the next pull. At the start of the next pack, I will begin my cycle again, but this time with Guardian and Holy Sheltron. At this point, Rampart will be back up. So once Guardian's timer runs out, I will just use Rampart again and follow the exact same steps. However, keep in mind that if you are in a rough spot, use your clemency as an emergency. Do what you need to do to survive. This concludes the new Paladin Guide for Dontro. Paladin carries over and builds on its powerful offensive and defensive utility for Medwalker. I hope all you guys enjoyed it, and I hope this helps newer players get a feel for Paladin. I wanted to add that last part about how to mitigate dungeon packs because it was highly requested and I know a lot of the players that are coming in for Dawn Trail are new. I wanted to make sure that newer paladins felt more comfortable in early sets of content and not just end game content. The rest of the tanks are coming up soon 
and we'll be collaborating with other tank specialists to help. So stay tuned for that. Consider liking the video and consider subscribing because any help is appreciated. Thank you all so much for your support and happy rating. Peace.